Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be replacing the motor on my Jin Ming Generation 8 M4A1, which you can see right here. And I'm going to show you how quickly we can get that done. So simply start off, I've already done it, but take out all the screws on your hand piece and just simply pop off the top, like that. Pop off the bottom, just like that. And then you can see your motor just here. That's held into the gearbox, just like that. Just here. Oop. So, I'm going to be using this bad boy because it saves me a lot of time. Just undo the four screws. And I need a screwdriver. Bam! And there we go. Alright, so, undo your four screws. A smaller screwdriver. Ta da! It helps if you're prepared to do a video, I think. But for me, I'd rather just let you see the struggle. That's perfect. So, undo all your screws. You've got nuts on the bottom, so just make sure they come on down. can be a bit stubborn sometimes so maybe just pushing through from the bottom just pour them out because your motor won't slide out of your, your gearbox while it's still in there and just pulls out like that so simple as that then just take off your shell Unsolder your connections. I've got a soldering iron right here. There we go, that one was really stuck on there, but that's it. Pull your motor off, just like that. And then the new motor I got is, let's see, this has no information on it, but I did put a metal pinion gear on there. But this is just a stock standard motor. So I am putting this 11.1 volt, 37,000 RPM, high speed, high torque motor. If you can see that one there, if I can get that in focus. That one right there. So, and I've noticed with all these motors, they are marked. So you've always got a red, a red and a blue, or a red and a black for active and neutral. 
So it just helps if you don't get them confused. Put your motor back into your little shell. Perfect. So what I might try and do is because this new motor did come with these cables, I might try and do what I do best and use these because I much prefer anything that plugs in to just a direct solder. I really don't like things like this, if that focuses. Yeah. So, just pop that on, pop that on, put that on and then screw it back into place. And the reason I'm going to use these pretty much is because I like the aesthetic of having the writing on this guy right on the top, right on the front. And I also got these earlier, but I have these little inline lugs, if you can see that. If it will stop focusing on my face, that bad boy right there, which I can use. I just need some cable cutters and heat shrink. Just cut the existing solder off, get it nice and neat.
And then you just want to crimp them down. So I'm just going to be using some long nose pliers, which I need to get. There's never one way to do something. So just do what you got to do. As long as it works, it works. Plus this is my project gun, so I'd rather I'd rather really not be fixed. And if I want to unplug it, plug something else in, I'd like to be able to do that. So basically exactly what you are looking at is just like that. A nice tidy connection because you don't want anything to short out. And the problem with this M4A1 is when you close this handpiece, you really don't have a lot of room in there, so you can't put a big lug or a big connector. And that's probably why they do solder it. Because you can't get a smaller connection than a solder. Soldering is pretty good. But you can see how quick this is, like this takes absolutely no time. And the reason I am upgrading the motor is basically this motor will run for about, let's say, two to three minutes. And then it gets red hot and just seizes, it just locks into place. So that's a motor fault that can occur. And I chose a bigger motor because I do want to put a bigger spring in. I want to play around with some FPS and see what I can do with these guns. I actually wouldn't mind doing a video where I get a chronograph. And basically I just start with like a 1.1, go to a 1.2, go to a 1.3, maybe 1.4, 1.5. And just play around with different spring variations and see how big of a difference you're actually getting in your FPS. And like I said, this is just my project gun, so I'm not too worried about making the cables nice and tight, like nice and neat or anything. I'm really just putting it in there for now. Just get it closed up. You just gotta be careful you don't pinch your cables, because then they can short. And if you're wondering, this is the dodgiest workshop on YouTube, yes. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Okay, 
There we go. Now I need my screws, which I don't even know where they are. So let's start, that one goes in there. going in there properly. Let me just fix that up. Okay. Basically that's it. That's how you change the motor. And as you can see, I don't even have a plug on this yet to test it. But basically your motor terminals you can do with lugs as long as you have the room. I got these out earlier. You can use like clip, clip together lugs, lugs that just push in. Always use insulated lugs because you just don't want anything shorting together. You can solder it. You can just twist it together and heat shrink it together because it's in a sealed little handpiece. The, uh, the chances of it slipping out or coming loose is very low, but it can happen. I didn't say it can't. But yeah, thanks for watching Dandirian's Workshop. I just wanted to show you quickly, I did actually just connect the battery and that fires.